On the outside, this may look like a 1950s training plane. Its front surface isn't just loaded with scientific instruments, but strengthened with thick armor plating. This is where a bolt of lightning burn a notch on its way out. The plane's been hit more than 30 times. Because this plane is the only aircraft on Earth capable of flying through a supercell. Now they scramble, heading for the heart of a storm. They're going to measure the exact temperature in different parts of the cloud to try to understand how tornado makers work. A second team is going to get in under the storm cell. They plan to release scientific balloons into the belly of it. They hit the road in an Oklahoma rainstorm on the track of a supercell. Some scientists think that temperature may be what turns an ordinary storm into a twister. These special helium-filled latex balloons carry instruments to measure temperature, humidity, and electrical charge. Like the plane, the giant balloons are taking the storm's temperature. They hope to find out why only some storms fire off twisters. The storm cloud dwarfs the people above and beneath it. They're homing in on how tornadoes really work. It's pretty scary being hit by lightning, even in an armored plane. The kinds of downdrafts that live inside supercells would rip the wings off a passenger jet in an instant. If this plane strayed into the heart of a tornado, for all its armor plating, it would be history. When a tornado hits people on the ground, it can be just as devastating. Tornadoes are killers. This guy's been close to the heart of one, and incredibly, he's lived to tell the tale. His testimony is vital for those trying to understand tornadoes. The first thing Tyler knew about the tornado, it was coming through the trees. People in Oklahoma have lived around twisters all their lives. They know they're killers. First priority, find a place to hide. They were saying if you're not underground, then you probably won't survive it. Tyler raced with the others to an underground pipe. They dropped down the hole and crawled as far as they could inside. Even so, they were only just out of reach of the ferocious winds. Tyler felt the clothes being ripped off his body. His mobile phone was carried away by the wind. The twister was trying to pull him out, and then it had passed. I peeked my head out and had to see what happened. I looked up and I mean, the whole building's gone. There were semi trucks just all over the place, you know. It looked like a war zone. When they emerged, they encountered a scene of total ruin. The freight terminal was gone. This car had been picked up and thrown the length of a football field before being squashed flat. That's the power of a twister. Like everyone who's lived through one, Tyler was lucky. If you think what happened to him was scary, check out what a twister can do to the human body when it turns ordinary household objects into high-velocity missiles. Small stones become bullets at hundreds of miles an hour. An ordinary pin could be embedded deeply in the human body. A sheet of glass or metal could sever limbs in an instant. Mud can be driven deep into the skin. Eye sockets and ears fill with debris. Someone who's been in a big twister can come out the other side with no skin, literally sandblasted. Sometimes they don't even find the body. With a water spout, debris is less of a danger. There's nothing but water for the storm to pick up. That's why the crew of the racing yacht survived. But there are much stronger water spouts, and if one of those had hit the yacht, the boat itself would have been picked up and smashed. Twisters usually move northeast in the United States. The Kansas tornado of 1991 was no exception. Observers said they could see three separate funnels swirling around one another. A small town called Andover was to bear the brunt. 
Their sirens were out of action. A police officer drove the streets trying to get the warning out to as many people as possible. He reached this mobile home park just in time. Almost 300 people were saved because they made it to the shelter. 13 died when the tornado ripped hundreds of mobile homes to pieces. The same tornado outbreak caught this camera crew on the interstate. They ran for cover under the bridge and they survived. This footage was broadcast around the world. They didn't realize how lucky they were. In the 1999 tornado season, at least two people were killed after being blown out from under an interstate bridge. Like standing under a tree in a thunderstorm, it's actually the worst possible place to hide. This is how it works. An interstate bridge is a V-shape. As the wind goes through the V, it has less and less space. It is believed that the same amount of wind in less space means more speed, and the bridge could act like an amplifier, accelerating the wind. It's a myth that an interstate bridge is safe, and the myth is causing people to take shelter in a death trap. They'd probably be safer away from the bridge, taking cover in a ditch. But it isn't easy to find somewhere that is safe when a twister comes visiting. This is the city of Moore, May 2003. And it could be one of the unluckiest places to live. Mom, Dad, Carl said that he took a hold of China. I got this one. Now, your diameter is 8,000 miles. 8,000 miles of digging. Whoa, well, he couldn't dig through all the magma. China? No way. Any holes in China? Ohio. Life's better with the butterfly. Come see all the ways you can get more done at msn.com. Enter now at weather.com for your chance to hunt real twisters with the Weather Channel. Concerned about bad breath? Forget gums and mints. Most just mask bad breath. Listerine pocket pack strips kill over 99% of odor causing germs. Get a clean mouth feel and freshen your breath. Instantly. Listerine pocket packs kill the germs. Feel the clean. If you want to get a jump on spring, you can. And if you want to do it now and pay for it later, you can. Right now at the Home Depot and Expo Design Center, you'll get no payments and no interest for 12 months on everything in the store. Just use your consumer credit card. Or if you don't have one, open a new credit card account and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. You can save up to $200. The Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. Lisa, what happened? Greg waited until 9 o'clock last night to get started. That's when my free minutes kick in. Greg, you're out. Your team should have joined in with Verizon Wireless. Then you could call each other anytime for free. You increase productivity and build unity. You can't do that if you're out. I thought I was fired. You are fired, you minute hoarding clock watcher. Free in-network calling from Verizon Wireless. Are all your employees in? Good. Now he means business. Verizon Wireless. We never stop working for you. May 2003 saw more tornadoes touch ground in the United States than any other month. And one of them took out this street. It could be one of the unluckiest places to live. Tornado warnings were issued in the city of Moore 21 minutes before the twister was spotted. This used to be a home until it turned into the epicenter of the May 8th tornado. This, uh room right here used to be my living room and uh, that was a bedroom over there uh, this was a kitchen and a kitchen area there and a dining room right here the demolition job is awesome and can be deadly if a big tornado catches you unprotected in an ordinary house your chances of survival can be slim 
Round here, being ready for tornadoes is a way of life. Want to know how a tornado actually turns what used to be a house into rubble? Tornado aftermath can look bizarre. The roof and walls can be gone and the interior be left almost untouched. Even delicate ornaments remain unmoved. This is because a tornado deconstructs a house from the top down. When there's a tornado, the shape of a roof can act like an aircraft wing. Just like a wing, the wind rushing across it creates lift. That starts to pull the roof up, away from the walls. The pressure of the wind on the front wall pushes it in, blowing the other walls outwards. With the roof gone, the house simply collapsed. It's thought that an F5 wind exerts a lifting force in the region of 100 tons. This is where building materials come to die. They've made a machine that throws debris around just as fast as a tornado does. The aim is to find out what might happen to buildings in the most extreme of natural conditions. We're going to put the force of a tornado impact through its paces. Tornado damage. F3 style. This is specially reinforced hurricane glass. But plenty of houses don't have reinforced windows. This is the kind of material many houses are built from in Tornado Alley. Even with an F3, a moderate tornado, the walls aren't going to provide a lot of protection. But now it's time to see what a twister can really do. The team reset the machinery for an F5. Now pieces of debris can be traveling at over 100 miles an hour. This test is going to show what it's like to be in a building hit by a full force tornado. The wall looks like it's made of paper. The furniture doesn't offer any protection either. In fact, it's the furniture that can kill you. In this kind of tornado, ordinary buildings are history. Now, a specially reinforced tornado wall. This is made of two layers of brick. The gap between them is filled with reinforced concrete. Even the tornado can't get through. And that's why in Tornado Alley, it pays to prepare for the worst. Meet a man whose life was saved by a good tornado shelter. I've been in three tornadoes. Don got into this safe room as soon as he heard the alert, 20 minutes before the twister hit. When it did, it went right over the top of the shelter. It started to vibrate as metal debris hit it with ear-splitting impact noise. In key tornado danger areas, the U.S. government provides money to help build shelters. Last time a tornado hit, he sheltered in the bathroom and survived. If he tried that in 2003, he wouldn't be alive to tell the tale. Instead, he was inside this concrete box. It's constructed in a single pour, so that there are no cracks or potential weaknesses. The door is steel and locks tight. It may look pretty cramped, but you probably only need to be inside for half an hour or less. It can take almost anything that a tornado can throw at it. It's just like being in a safe. How do you describe a tornado for anybody that's never been through one? It's a bulldozer with a jet engine, and that's, that's a tornado for you. 
But some people don't have any choice, and they have to get in the face of a tornado. Stop obsessing over the floor. Unlike hardwoods, quick step laminates are designed to take the wear and tear of everyday life and still look beautiful. Quick step. Floors that stand up. For the dealer nearest you, visit quickstep.com. We vacationed here every year. One day, Brian, he made this giant sand castle and said, this is where we belong. We opened the sandbar three months later. After Brian died, I think some people thought that I should probably close down and move back to the real world. But this is our place. Insurance from Mutual of Omaha. This is where I belong. Help keep dreams alive. Begin today. Imagine a storm so fierce, so powerful, it can mean only one thing. Storm Week is here. Tomorrow, the drama continues. Winds overturn vehicles. Homes are demolished. Think it could get any worse? This hurricane has only just begun. Experience the awesome power. Watch Hurricane. Tomorrow at 8 Eastern and Pacific, as Storm Week continues on the Weather Channel. Come prepared. <laughs> We check with our customers and ask them, how did you find us? And they let us know from the real yellow pages from Bell South or on realpages.com. Realpages.com is what we're using now to get some international business. We have grown considerably with realpages.com. They give us the constant feed of business that we need. And it's constant. And it's constant. Don't miss your chance to advertise. Call 1-800-GET-REAL. Pink hearts. Yellow moons. Orange stars. Green clovers. And purple horseshoes. They're all great things that belong in a bowl at breakfast. If you're seven. The new low-carb breakfast bowl with eggs, meat, and cheese. And six carbs. Only at Hardee's. You're one of Two thousand three had seen the worst tornado month ever recorded in the U.S. Over five hundred twisters touched ground in May alone. Because of the warnings, only forty people were killed. It's pretty amazing to see what the twister did to this street. These houses were rebuilt after the 1999 tornado. So were the ones that used to stand here. It's extremely rare for two big twisters to hit the same spot. This street is that spot. Usually the closest you can get to a twister is to examine the destruction it leaves behind. Once we know the level of damage this tornado caused, we'll know how severe it was. That lets the scientists estimate the wind speed. The Federal Emergency Management Agency moves in to start the cleanup. Part of their role is to assess the damage. Smashed furniture, debris all over the place. The corner of Lawton and Northwest 12th Street, where there used to be a street sign. This is the direction the tornado took as it powered through here. And this is where the street sign ended up, embedded in the upstairs landing of a nearby house, more than 200 yards away. 
Lawton, Northwest 12th and Lawton Avenue. Because that's what twisters like to do. Pick things up and move them around. One of the most amazing things about tornadoes is their ability to move huge objects or to carry smaller pieces of debris for hundreds of miles. June 8, 1995, Pampa, Texas, there's a tornado alert in force. This isn't a killer twister, but as the storm passes through an industrial area to the south of town, it picks up staggering quantities of debris from huge things like vehicles and bits of buildings down to small personal items like photos, checkbooks, even receipts. If you think the destruction the funnel causes is amazing, just wait and see where some of the stuff it grabbed ended up. The aftermath of the Pampa storm is the centerpiece of a study into what happens to the debris that is carried off. Some of the items picked up by the twister can be traced. A receipt traveled more than 70 miles northeast from Pampa into the neighboring state of Oklahoma. Heavy debris was carried half that distance. The furthest the twister ever carried an object is 223 miles. There are two ways in which tornadoes pick things up. With light objects, the updraft carries them. This means they can be pulled right up into the supercell itself. With heavier objects, shape is crucial. A car is not that different in shape from an aircraft wing. If the wind's blowing fast enough, it can lift the car off the ground altogether. But if the car changes the way it's facing the wind, the lift can disappear in a flash, and the spinning funnel spits it out, back onto the ground with devastating consequences. To get inside a twister, scientists are going to have to find a way to keep their instruments on the ground. These revolutionary red cones are one way of doing just that, and they are the only scientific devices ever to have been through a tornado and come out the other side with accurate pressure readings. It takes years of experience to accurately predict where there's going to be a tornado. The winds need to be in the right direction. The humidity has to be high. And bizarrely, tornadoes like sunshine. It helps to destabilize the atmosphere. The probes have been extensively tested in wind tunnels. They should be able to stand up to the winds of even the most vicious twister. They are this flattened cone shape to prevent the tornado from picking them up. Each of the holes in the surface of the probe is the entry to a pressure sensor. And from the weather data, they can actually measure the speed of the wind in the tornado. The only problem is getting it into the right place. No one else has ever done this. It doesn't just take the right technology. It takes the guts and experience to get close enough to a twister. Massive tornado! Gonna cross the road! They have to leave placing the cones to the last second. They want it to pass right over the probes. But now it's time to run for it. Let's go! The probes are designed to survive a tornado, but the team is not. They have to retreat to a safe distance in the van and wait out the twister. They don't know if the probes are going to make it. Tests are one thing, tornadoes are another. The mission is a success. They've discovered the drop in pressure in the heart of the tornado is bigger than they expected. The suction is more extreme than they ever measured before. Tornadoes don't last forever. There's a reason why they shut down. 
As long as the storm goes on producing an updraft, there is a power source for the twister to go on wreaking its destruction. If the storm power is shut off, the tornado evaporates. All twisters do eventually come to an end. One thing's for sure, all big tornadoes will leave behind some kind of damage. And because they remain so mysterious and deadly, the best we can do is to be prepared and remember that a tornado demands nothing less than our total respect.